Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. And tonight is one of those nights where I just don't feel like doing anything. I've sat down in front of the computer and for literally like the last like three hours, I've just been watching music videos and reading articles about musicians. And it's funny how the web will just spin you in all these different directions. Um, so John Sanmez, I was watching one of his videos. I mention him a lot. I don't know why I give him so much free press, but um, seems like a real cool guy. But uh, we, and we've talked back and forth in the comments, which is pretty sweet. But um, he was telling this story in one of his latest videos when he did the story of his life that he was in this like small town of Idaho, which was really outside of Boise. The reason why he was there is his dad was in the Air Force, so he moved all over the country. But in this small town, he happened to be at some sort of stand when the band Blink-182 had come up to ask him where the movie theater was because they wanted to see the movie American Pie, for which they had a small cameo. And they actually hadn't seen their 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 you know their their themselves in the in the film and this is like a major Hollywood release. So, at first, John didn't even realize who they were. I mean, and th this band w was huge in the '90s. So my my um like my taste in music has changed quite a bit. Like I can tell you that back when kids like New Kids on the Block, and I was just a young kid in like grade school. I didn't like new kids on the block. I lived in a um, outside of D.C. in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, which really is, you know, it's, it's you're pretty much in the city you're right on the outskirts of, of Washington, D.C. And at that point, you know, everybody like new kids on the block um, and, and all this other stuff. And I was listening to Guns N' Roses like I for some reason, like even though none of my friends listened to them, that's the kind of music I liked. And then and that kind of transitioned into actually it started with like Bon Jovi back in like New Jersey. And my mom took me to a concert when I was like even younger. Um, but I guess I was into like eighties hair metal type of stuff, which kind of gave way to, um, you know, with guns and roses, which was kind of like a cross between you know hair metal and going into the nineties and then going through the nineties, man, I was on this, uh, Nirvana kick. And then eventually that transitioned into, to hip hop when I started listening to Wu Tang clan. And then that ended up transitioning over, you know, Tupac and Biggie Smalls. And I kind of did that through all through high school, but I did have a respect for Blink and, uh, I've always liked Blink. And now I'm, I'm this, you know, rock music, you know, person that, that really got into programming because of rock music. So it's funny that I can spend two hours, just um you know reading up on things because once it went to blink 182 it was like oh yeah you know green day i wasn't a huge fan but they were in like the rock and roll hall of fame i'm like well they're in the hall of fame and then you're looking at oh yeah prince is in the hall of fame now and then uh it just it it, it goes on and on but um one of the things i want to talk about in this video is like somebody mentioned it before that stack overflow is a great source for programming information and that couldn't be more true. What what is funny is when I first started uh, getting into programming, Stack Overflow was popular. But as a programmer and somebody who was teaching myself and didn't really know, um, I didn't really think of it as like the go to. There was still quite a bit of like thread forum sites that you got a lot of your information from. And nowadays you see a thread forum site and you're like, oh damn it, that you know I don't want to get my information here. But sometimes when Google's sending you there, you're like, oh I gotta. I got to weed through this garbage to figure out, you know, where this answer might be because Google thinks that the answer lies inside of here. And it's almost as bad as like the Google groups. Have you guys ever gotten into the Google groups when you're trying to find documentation? Just a horrible setup. So Stack Overflow, they came along with the Stack Exchange. And this is a .NET site, by the way. Uh, they, they basically revolutionized the way question and answering should be. And they, and they built this, uh, this, this, accountability into the site where like you, you can't really cheat it very easily um and you know there's this entire community that that keeps up the environment you, like for the most part you don't see trolls that infest things like youtube if you go to youtube and you you know you could it could be a news article about some terrible tragedy and it's just it's it really it's 90 percent troll just flame baiting, you know, this and that just with these extreme views, like celebrating the death of cops or vice versa. I mean, it's just, just terrible human beings, you know, people acting like complete animals. But with, with Stack Overflow, I mean, that stuff is completely moderated. I never really see that type of activity. I and mean, it might just be because it's a programming environment and it just doesn't flow. Um, and we don't really talk about world affairs and things like that. But um, what is interesting to me is that when I was first getting started, I had all these saved scripts and everything. And I told you guys the story when I lost my hard drive 
that I was I was upset by all the work that got poured into building these scripts that I would most likely never use or even be able to, you know, find out, you know, because basically if you're not just filing away this stuff in a way that you can find it easily, it's like saving a bunch of bookmarks and, you know, forgetting why you have all this stuff saved. It happens all the time. Um, and for me, though, I, you know, a lot of it was just the effort that got put into it. And it was almost like a museum that you want to be able to reminisce on and be like, oh, this is the way things used to be done in, in the Chris Hawks world. And then he learned how to do things, the, you know, the right way, or at least he thinks he does until, you know, six months down the road. And I realized that I'm doing all this stuff wrong now. Um, but with Stack Overflow, people have kind of, at least in my book, have kind of done away with this whole, OK, let me store all this knowledge on a flash drive or in some you know folder on my desktop where I'm going to go ahead and resort to that stuff. Now, from a business perspective, like if you're working for a company and they got all these different things that you got to do, like, you know, if you need this access, you got to go and request it from this person. Now, that's the kind of, you know, an exception that I'm talking about where we at work, you know, will end up creating these, these folders and stuff where we're storing all this how-to information because it directly applies to our job. But when it comes to you know, programming, which is also our job as programmers, we don't really need to store all that shit anymore. We don't need to put it in, in even bookmarks and stuff like that. Stack Overflow is this humongous wealth of knowledge when it comes to programming. It's almost all you need. Where you used to have Perl manuals like the Camel Book that told you all about Perl and you'd always have to find your way back into the Camel Book because of the way Perl was written. Um, you know, that then got replaced with these these forums and stuff like so if it's Pearl, like the Pearl Monks, and that's a terrible site, by the way. Um, the, the, you know, you have all these different thread forums and stuff and then Stack Overflow came around and now it has everything, man. It, it has literally everything. You can see all these tags of certain things that I follow. I don't answer as much as I should. It it really kind of sucks. Like um, in some ways, I've said that, that there are some flaws with, with the way this works, because if you were in the door on Stack Overflow when it first came out, like you'll notice a lot of people that have, you know, 20,000, 30,000, you know, score or something like that. They might only have like, you know, 10 accepted answers, but it might be something so common, like how do you hide or show something in jQuery? Well, that's going to be looked up a ton of times. It's probably upvoted a thousand times. So somebody, you know, Somebody obviously just got 10,000 points just based on that question alone. And that's not even counting, um, you know, additional points and stuff like that, that I'm sure that, well, I don't know. I guess they're only going to get points if they either ask the question or if they answer the question. But still, you know, that that is just one particular case. I've seen questions that have literally upvotes into the thousands and stuff. So if you were on, you know, something that's that commonly looked up, then you're going to end up getting a, a higher score than other programmers that are coming along now. So I've heard in, in the uh, from certain people, they're like, during a programming interview, it should be asked, what is your Stack Overflow score? And to me, I think that that is misleading because, like I said, if you were in the door six or seven years ago, you're going to have a much higher score. Now, obviously, if you have more time to answer people's questions and get all involved, you might have a higher score too. But then again, you know, what have you been doing? to be able to answer all those questions for all these people all the time. And I say that as somebody who spends quite a bit of their time doing YouTube videos, but still, I, I, I think you guys understand where I'm getting at. If you spend a ton of time on Stack Overflow, you're obviously going to have a higher score. Um, if you're getting started just now, it's going to be much harder for you to get up to the scores that other people have. Um, if you're a true expert, which there are many you know true experts on here, that you're going to have a high score. But those are you know really the exception and not the rule. And... So I just think it's, you know, it's unnecessary to ask, you know, somebody else what their Stack Overflow score is. That's just my opinion. Um, or at least hold too much credence with, you know, what their score is. Um, so, so I find that, that interesting that, you know, in this, uh, in this glorious day and age that we don't have to store all this stuff and, and to, you know, to favorites and to disk drives and flash drives and portable hard disks and things like that, uh, or cloud nowadays. Um, now that that said, I mean, what happens if like somehow Stack Overflow had like a catastrophic, you know, fallout or they go out of business or they lose all their data? I would imagine that would never happen. I'm sure that they're backed up many times over in AWS and Azure and all this other stuff. But if that would ever happen, it'd be a majorly sad day in the programming industry. So, yes, um, Stack Overflow is the number one source for programmers to get their information. In fact, I would argue it is the most important source out there. Uh, besides maybe the 
technology that you're learning if you go to that particular website itself. Um, one of the things I didn't mention, like when somebody's like, well, C-sharp resources, and, and I think I did mention dot, you know, Microsoft's re resources, like their website, but it's not very good. Um, but if you're going to learn something like TypeScript or you're going to learn Angular 2.0 or React or something like that, you always start with the, the actual documentation from the company or whoever produced that particular thing. And then maybe you peruse through the source, you know, source, and then you start writing code and you use Stack Overflow to help you. And you can also use YouTube tutorials and videos as well. But, um, you know, you always start with that, with that documentation. But anyway, it's a, it's a good day to have, uh, to be a programmer because we have Stack Overflow. And, uh, and definitely if you're not on this, this is the, the go-to site for all your questions. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good night. Bye.